Four years have passed since first contact. Earth, the third planet, fell under siege to an alien fleet the likes of which we'd never seen. The situation seemed dire, but to our surprise, the enemy were easily repelled, withdrawing at the first show of resistance and vanishing as swiftly as they'd appeared. Their technology had simply been no match for that of mankind. Considering the minimal damage done, there was perhaps a silver lining to the incident. The attack had unified us, bringing an end to eons of conflict over ethnic and religious divides. Afterward, we studied what we could from the wreckage of enemy ships, but there was precious little to be learned. The vessels had been outfitted with self-bricking mechanisms, making them all but impossible to examine. Then, two years later, there was a second contact. The identity of the alien menace remained a mystery, but this time, we were ready for them. Knowing another encounter was all but inevitable, we'd worked together as one human race to make preparations to intercept and attack. Having only incurred minor damage in the previous clash, we'd assumed the enemy would be even easier to repel this time, but the alien invaders had another surprise for us. Their once outdated technology had evolved immensely in two years' time. It was now nearly on par with our own. Had we not undergone a technological revolution over those two years, they might have wiped us out then and there. Then, as the battle descended into chaos, the enemy vanished yet again. This time, however, we were able to track them. They had performed a series of space-time jumps, consolidating their forces at the edge of our solar system. Then, with a mysterious blast, disappeared altogether. Some theorized they'd recognize their imminent defeat and self-destructed, but ultimately, we determined it safest to assume they'd escaped, leaving open the possibility of a future encounter. Another two years passed, and now they've made contact for a third time. This time, certain facets of their technology have surpassed ours. This comes in spite of humanity's strength and coordination and further technological advances since the last contact. We no longer have the assurance we once did, only questions. Why do they attack at two-year intervals? Where did they come from? And who, or what, are they? The United Nations Space Force is Earth's first line of defense against alien invasion. We've concentrated our ranks along the orbital path of the eighth planet, Neptune. This was a predictive measure based on the enemy's previous appearances near Neptune's neighboring planets, Uranus, then Pluto. Unfortunately, with this third contact, the enemy have instead emerged slightly inward of the orbital path of the third planet from the Sun, Earth. They've since dispersed into multiple squadrons and spread across the inner solar system. To make matters worse, they've quickly managed to establish a position within attack range of the Earth and have begun pelting our home planet with asteroids. The UNSF are heading back as quickly as possible, but at this rate, the Earth will incur catastrophic damage before they ever arrive. And so the duty falls to us.
We've assembled each nation's best and brightest at Earth Moon One and begun preparations for a joint space command. The enemy is using an Excel gate to pelt the Earth with asteroids. The damage is extensive. A few more of these strikes and the environmental destruction alone will be catastrophic. Our hope is therefore to neutralize their base of operations quickly, but we don't have the intel we need. We need to dispatch a reconnaissance craft, but with the Space Command still in its preparatory stages, none have yet been deployed to our ranks. Instead, we'll conduct this recon operation using our support craft. All Feather 1 spacecraft are equipped with auxiliary mobile support pods. These are the most recon-capable vessels in our command. But as the name says, they were designed for support and are thus unmanned and unarmed. Their partner Feather One Crafts will therefore accompany them on this mission. After the jump, all units will advance to the navigational point and conduct a scan. You are to undock from your support craft during this scan to ensure optimal response time, should any emergency arise. Once scanning is complete, redock with your support craft and withdraw. Best of luck. This is Hog 1. Right. Birdie, radio check. Loud and clear, sir. This marks the first field up of the illustrious Joint Space Command. Let's move out. Mission area coordinates confirmed. Initiating jump. All scan points will be displayed on your HUD. Just follow the screen. Approaching mission area. Disengaging jump drive. All units, fan out. Let's be home in time for dinner. Please align your targeting reticle with the green marker. All units have reached the scanning point. Very good. Undock your support craft and start scanning. Undocking Kite 3. Stand by on heightened alert. Kite 3. Initiating scan. All support craft have finished conducting their scan, sir. All right. Let's dock them and roll back. Picking up increased kinetic activity at the enemy site. Well, I guess they finally noticed. Thermal reading spiking. They're attacking. Kite 3 damaged. All channels offline. Detecting jump turbulence. No ID signals. Multiple enemy craft exiting jump. All units, intercept at your own discretion. Time to step it up.
Well, that's that, I guess. Detecting a large kinetic reading within enemy lines. It's an asteroid. The enemy ejected an asteroid at us through the Excel gate. Damn it! Hawk one to Garuda. We've got your enemy data, but as you can see, we've got big trouble. What's the plan? This is Garuda. Threat confirmed. Hawk Featherwing, use your support craft to recharge and pursue the asteroid while awaiting further instruction. Roger that, Garuda. Birdie, use my support pod to recharge. Man, should have known they wouldn't let us ease into this gig. The asteroid launched through the enemy's Excel gate is 300 meters in diameter. If it continues to plunge toward the Earth, the damage will be immeasurable. We are now loading Falcon 1 with a resonant frequency round. Once it's ready, we, along with Eagle Featherwing, will head to your position. Meanwhile, take note of the vernier thrusters attached to the asteroid for course correction. Destroy them before we arrive. Over and out. Getting in front of this thing will be a royal pain. Bertie, you handle the front. Me and Bright will take care of the rear. Really, Captain? You're gonna make him do your dirty work just because you don't feel like it? Quiet. Captain's orders are Captain's orders. Ugh, 